Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, Yunus Shafiri is here and in this video we are going to see a scenario about Kotlin coroutines where we are going to share a state and how that pool of thread can affect that. Let's get started. So here I'm having a predefined code as you can see, I will explain that in a minute. But before that, let me just review the explanation of Kotlin coroutines. Now Kotlin coroutines, as they said, they are lightweight thread. They can run on multiple threads, they can resume, suspend and so on. So that notion we need we need it here because we are going to see a problem. This problem not related to coroutine but concurrency in general, but we will see it. Now, first of all, I'm having this run blocking main method with context dispatcher default, like here. I'm just running this on pool of thread of default. This is specific for CPU things. And I'm doing some update. The update I'm doing it is like following. I'm just calculating the time here needed here. I'm just running coroutine scope. And I'm just launching 99 coroutines. And for each coroutine, I'm doing almost 1,000 updates. This number are just for testing purposes. All right, so as you can see, here is my code. And once I finish that, I'll tell the time and how many updates. It's just a multiplication, so you can update that here. So if you run this code right here, we will see that the multiplication will produce this one. But the updates, as you can see, are this one. So there is a problem. Now, this problem, as I said, it's not related to coroutines, but concurrency in general. But why is that, first of all? Now, coroutines, as, as we said, if you give it a dispatcher of multiple threads, it will run on multiple threads. So what's happening here is that some coroutines will run on thread one, coroutine will run on thread two. So the updates are concurrent, so they don't manage that. That's why the problem. Now, if you want to see what's the thread you are operating on, for each coroutine here, I'm just doing to print the following. You can do that thread is thread dot current thread dot, for example, the name. And if you run that, now it will be a long list here, but just for example. Okay, so the dispatcher, this is the default dispatcher, and each dispatcher has many threads. So there is the coroutines that will run on this thread, on this thread, on this thread. So there is inconsistency between the threads modification. So that will happen. So you can fix that issue with myriad of techniques, right? So the first one, like the normal first one, is just that you can here for this counter, you can use like an atomic integer, like for zero. And for each update, you have to do increment and get. Now, if you run it, it will work. As you can see, here is the update. Let me just delete that. It will still working on this thread, but you can delete it. Let me just wait for here. As I said, it works just fine. Now, the other solution we can do is to make these coroutines run on one single thread. That's the normal thing. Like, we can do it here. Like, let me just go back to zero. And we have to create a context, coroutine context, in which it will be one thread only. So you can do the following, but single thread context, and do a new single thread context, and give it like my counter context. And instead of using this slash like that, or this dispatcher directly like that, we can provide this single thread context. If we run it here, the updates will be like the same as the count. So we solved that issue here, as, it, as you can see, we solved it. But how we solved that is an interesting about Kotlin coroutines feature. So coroutines will run on a pool of thread. If you give it one thread, it will run on thread. If you give it multiple thread, it will run on multiple thread. So just make this in mind. The point of this video is to make this point in mind. Now, the way how to fix that is not the purpose of this video, but I'm going to share other techniques here also. As you said, you can do the atomic integer. We did this new single thread coroutine. But if you print that also, if you print that, it will be just one single thread. One single thread. The thread is my counter context. Okay, that's type. We can also solve that by something called mutex, or they are usually called before, it's called semaphore, as we learned that in the university. So we can create something called mutex. Let me just create it. Call mutex here. Okay, it's mutex like that. And the way to do that is simply when you want to update this file, what you have to do is to choose this mutex right here and to do with lock. So just copy paste here, and if you run it, you will see the updates are exactly the same, but the time increased. That's the cost of locking. 
all right so these are related to concurrency thing and race conditions and everything i think developers should learn about this concept race condition how you can use mitex how you can manage parallel threats execution and so on this is an important stuff it's hard to stop what's an important stuff for every software engineer so that's all for this video as i said the whole point of discussing this part of this video is to see the coroutine execution parallel together and how dispatchers something like default dispatcher can affect the execution on shared state that's the main thing about this video we saw how, to, how you can solve that like using mutex and in atomic integer but that was not the point of this video the point was how you can use that new single thread because on one single thread you can run multiple queries so thanks a lot for watching this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel as always and see you in the next videos Salam alaikum.